I'm back again with another really interesting video and in this video guys we are going to talk about a super relevant topic in today's generative AI world that is called as Llama Index. So without taking any time further, let's get started. So first of all guys, I want to also ask you guys if you are already well versed with something called as Langchain. Okay, so if you guys have not seen my previous Langchain videos, I'll just give you a brief one liner that Langchain is actually a framework which can help you load your generative AI models or large language models in your Python code and use those large language models to create any machine learning application that you want. Okay, so why am I talking about Langchain when the topic of today is, is Llama Index? So basically guys, Llama Index is also a framework like Langchain, which also does a similar thing of trying to help you to use large language models to perform certain tasks. Okay. Now the question is going to be, is Llama Index same as that of Langchain? And the answer is no. They both are different frameworks. Now Langchain is a framework which is more versatile and more diverse. It is very flexible. It has got many API options for you to explore. For example, something called as agents. You can use agents in Langchain to create a REST API uh, integration and SQL uh, chain integration. So you can have a lot many flexible options with Langchain to integrate your large language model with any uh, you know sort of data source that you want. For example, a SQL query, or for example, a REST API, for example, certain documents that you can use to fetch your result from. Okay. But Llama Index, guys, is similar to Langchain, but actually Llama Index provides you a very, very efficient framework. In fact, a much more efficient framework than Langchain for RAG pipeline. Okay. Now, if you guys are not aware about RAG pipeline, RAG pipeline actually stands for Retrieval Augment Generation. Where actually what we do, guys, is we have got a set of documents okay so let's say you have got all these documents right so you can see it provides advanced rag that's its main feature so you have got this set of documents with you basically and uh, you want to use those set of documents as your source of truth so let's say if i want that my large language model if i'm trying to ask it something i want to query it something i want that the language model should only fetch the results from that set of documents. Then it becomes a rack pipeline where you have a data source where your documents are present. You are loading those documents in a sort of a store, a vector store. And then your large language model is using that vector store as a source of truth and only uh, answering your queries from that store. Okay. That becomes your RAG pipeline. Okay. So Llama Index provides a very efficient way of creating those RAG pipelines. And that is why it is tailor made for these type of use cases. So it depends upon your use case guys, what you should use for your machine learning application. Should you use Llama Index if you have got a RAG pipeline or should you use Langchain if you want a more diverse or a more versatile or flexible sort of architecture. Okay. So that is what Llama Index is guys. It is basically a framework that helps you to create a LLM based application, but it provides you a very advanced technique for creating RAG pipelines. It provides a very efficient way of doing it. So if you have that sort of use case, you must use Llama Index uh, framework to actually create that. Okay. So. Uh, however, guys, if you go to uh, Llama Index page, you will see that they have provided all the documentation of what all things it can use. It can be used for RAG. It provides certain agents also. And uh, there are certain other, uh, you know, APIs and things that are going to be added in this Llama Index, which you can keep it up with this, keep up with latest page. And if you click on these links, it, you will actually land up on the page, uh, which I just showed you in a moment. And you are just going to read about what's all happening in Llama Index, what all advancements are going on. Okay. 
Now, talking about why uh, we need Lama Index, what are its advantages, how is it different from Langchain, we have talked about the introduction a lot. It is now time for us to try to use this and see how easy Lama Index is to actually create a RAP pipeline from scratch. Okay. Uh, so if you want to use Lama Index guys, which I am going to show you the notebook in a moment, I must tell you that you need to first install Lama Index. Okay. So you can use these commands with install uh, to actually install Lama Index. But if you want to learn more about Lama Index and how is it being used, you can always refer to the documentation and they have a very good documentation of what all APIs they have and what all high level concepts they provide, uh, you know, support for. Okay. But as I told you, we have already gone through the introduction in a very high level term. So we can now jump to the programming part, which is the most interesting part where we are actually going to use something called as Lava Index and Grok to actually create a pipeline. Okay. So let's uh, look into it. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to close this tab first and let's look into it. So let's start with the installation part first guys. So what we are trying to do here, we are going to create a RAG pipeline where we will take a document and then we are going to query that document with the help of a large language model. To do that with Lama Index guys, the first thing that you have to do is you have to pip install Lama Index. So what we have done here, we have installed Lama Index. We have installed uh, Lava Index LLMs. We have also in, uh, installed Grok library here, guys. Why do we need Grok library? So if you guys haven't seen my previous video, which is the latest recent video that I have created, Grok is a framework for doing AI inference. So if I talk about inference, it is basically just using a large language model, querying it and getting some answer. The only thing is you are not taking that language model on your local machine. You are not downloading it on your local machine. You are actually running that LLM model on a server. And all you have to do is you just need a API key from Grok. And then you are able to use their server and use the large language model present on their server. Uh, to do your uh, queries and uh, to do to create your RAG pipeline as well. Okay, so that is why we need the Grok library here. We also need Lama Index embeddings. We uh, uh, also need Lama Index embeddings, hugging face. So we need the embedding guys because obviously we are going to have a document store here and you cannot query a document just like that in an LLM guys. You have to first convert a document into a vector into a numeric form. And how do you do that? You do it with the help of embeddings. Okay. So that is why all these packages are very, very important. Okay. And also disclaimer guys, I actually took this notebook from uh, somebody I found on LinkedIn and unfortunately I have forgotten their name so I cannot credit them. Uh, but uh, if you guys are watching that video and this is your notebook, please do write down in the comment section below because I would definitely like to credit you for this. This has been really wonderful. Uh, so now that we have installed all the uh, packages guys, it's time to install the libraries. Now, uh, we have got a number of libraries here which we are going to go through one by one. So basically we have got a vector store index uh, which is to create the index of our documents. We have got a simple directory reader which we are going to read a directory of documents. We are going to use a storage context guys. So what is a storage context? Storage context is something which we use to actually store our vector store index on a disk. Okay. So what happens is that when you have created an index of your document and you want to actually don't lose it, you actually store that in a storage context and you store it on a disk. So you can download that on your disk. And then you, with this storage context library only, you can actually use the same context which is stored or downloaded on your disk. You can actually load it and then use it again so that you always don't have to actually have the document, create the vector store index and do all the boilerplate stuff. You can create the index once, store it on your disk and then just use that index for all of your, you know, all of your uh, uh, things. 
um, now we have got uh, storage context we have also got service context here so service context is basically a python module that again lama index provides and this python module is like a resource holder so as i told you that uh, your um, documents cannot just be ingested by a large language model they first need to be converted into a into a token into a vector right so when you create an index of these documents this index needs to uh, be created in a certain form it, it needs to perform a certain steps right it needs to first take your documents convert it into a vector form and then create an index of that so there are multiple steps involved in it and service context is a python module that wraps all the resources which are needed in these steps together for example it will have the, your embedding model it will have your large language model it will have your documents and it will have all these resources together and when you are trying to create an index all you need is this service context object with you and it is going to create an index okay and then finally there is a method called as load index from storage which as the name suggests is just a method so you can load your index from your disk so you don't have to create the index again and again okay next we have got hagging face embedding this which is just to create the embedding we have also called a sentence splitter because uh, just for efficiency purpose it's better to um, you know chunk your documents into different sentences obviously we are using a grok library here for ai inference next part is just loading the grok library uh, so api key so guys if you are using google collab you will have this api key present here which i do so this api key is just loaded here so the first step in lama index is data ingestion so as i told you simple directory reader is actually just taking this input file argument and this pdf file is now going to be uh, read and its object is going to be placed in reader now my uh, pdf document is present here so it is just going to read it and it is going to uh, you know create that uh, document object now this part is just uh, you know simply checking if the document object is created correctly next comes chunking right so the chunking is that you actually take your documents and then you take their sentences and you split it into a chunk size this is basically needed guys because for efficiency purposes you don't want to actually process the entire big data at once so that is going to be slow so you do uh, you know sentence splitting you do sort of chunking just to make it more efficient and then again the chunked nodes that we have the split nodes that we have created we are just checking them out through these print statements finally we have got the embedding model guys so in the embedding model we you see that we are using the sentence transformers model uh, recently we saw sentence transformers uh, model 3 has come up so we have not used the latest one but we are definitely using a mini uh, sentence transformer model just so because uh, you know things are faster you can use a bigger model as well but i just wanted it just to be a little bit quicker okay now we have got our embedding model and it's also now time to create our llm model so we are using a lama 3 model and we are using that with the help of grok which is a ai inference so we will not load the model in our cache on our machine we will actually use the model to be uh, running on the grok server and uh, then we'll just use this object from grok to actually query that model with our own rag pipeline okay next part is the service context so as i told you guys service context is nothing but a resource holder so it holds your embedding model and it holds your llm model and now we will just use this service context to create our vector store index so you can see that vector store index is having a method called as from documents where we are actually providing the documents to it we are uh, you know providing the service context to it and we are also providing the node parser nodes where we actually split uh, the sentences into chunks so with this configuration vector store index will know that it has to chunk the documents in such and such configuration it has to use the server context embedding model to create the vectors and it has to use this particular llm for further query okay 
So now that vector index is created, it is, it is time for us to save this index. It is very important for you to save this index guys. Otherwise, always whenever uh, you will need querying from this index, you will have to create the index uh, from the scratch from your document, which you don't want, right? Unless you have a use case where your documents are like instantly changing in real time, they are changing. Unless you have that sort of use case, I think it's better that you just you know take your context and put it in your disk and whenever you want to use it you just load it with the help of uh, storage context from default function have the directory here and you you can just uh, you know create the storage context object and you then you can load it from the method called as load index from storage okay so in the load index from storage you provided the storage context which is just basically nothing but just directory you also provided the storage context object here and it is just going to put the index in a storage context object. Okay. So once you have the index loaded, it is time. Now you basically have got all the resources. Okay. You have got your vector index. You have got your LLM. You have got everything with you. So now it is time for us to uh, actually start querying the data, right? It is time for us to query the documents. For that you need to create a query engine and because we are querying from the vector index we will use a method in the index called as as query engine so we will use uh, the vector index okay so that's the index that we loaded from storage index as query engine and then we are going to provide the service context here okay as an object finally we will have the query engine so what we have to do is we have to provide the query to it Query is explain the market bond. So this is some uh, finance PDF guys and we are just querying something called as explain what is the market bonds to it. And then you create the query object and then you do query engine dot <coughs> query. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, you can see now the response has been produced. And now you can just print the response that bonds are debt instruments uh, uh, similar to loans, blah, 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 right? And all this response has been fetched to, from this PDF document, okay? So now you can see, guys, that within a few lines of code and very fast, we actually created a whole RAG pipeline. We were able to load a document we were able to create an index of that document and we were able to query that document as well uh, pretty easily with the help of all these tools that Lama Index and Grok has provided us, okay? So that was a video guys, that would be the introduction video of how you can use Lama Index to query your uh, documents to create a uh, your own rack pipeline. You can always uh, refer to Lama Index documentation for anything else that you want to do with it. But this uh, pretty much sums up how quickly you can work together with this. Okay. In the end, guys, I would just like to say that Lama Index is a very, very uh, powerful framework for creating uh, document based question answering. And I will highly recommend you to use that. And I will also say to use it with Grok because then it becomes much, much more efficient. Okay. So if you like this video guys and if it helped you in your learning procedure, please do write down in the comment section below. Please do like this video and share this video with your friends. If you have any feedback or suggestions for me, please do write down in the comment section as well. And in the end guys, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon for future notifications on more such programming and coding related videos. I'll see you guys in the next video guys. Until then, take care and bye bye.